الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان استقى الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله this is a topic that requires much attention and i don't think i'll be able to give it justice today nevertheless i would like to touch upon it due to it being a real caring issue in our society it's none other than the issue of pornography it's an epidemic that has not only affected the non-muslims but it has also affected the ummah as a whole and has not only affected the general muslims but it has affected the people of sunnah it has affected the young brother who is not married it has affected the young sister who is not married it has affected the married man and it has also affected the married woman this is a disease that has hit us severely from the student in school to the student of knowledge so what is pornography without going into too much detail pornography refers to sexually explicit media that are primarily intended to sexually arouse the audience Dave, that is the definition a decent definition pornography refers to sexually explicit media that are that is or, or that are primarily intended to sexually arouse the audience and according to the british board of film classification in 2020 the average young person is exposed to porn or pornography by the age of 13 that's the average which means there are kids younger than that have been who, that, who have been exposed to it and if that's the case by the time he gets married allahu a'lam what his mind has been polluted with by the time he gets married initially with the absence of screens and fast internet pornography could only be accessed via magazines and on the top of the shelf in the news agent uh, in the news agent anyone who's been around for a while knows what i'm talking about and the news agent you go to a local news agent they'll have it top of the shelf and you'll be shy to look up that was only with regards to magazines at that particular time very difficult to get a hold of but with the rise of screen usage and fast internet in this time do you know do you know how or what the number of visits are to these websites in 2021, a study was done whereby it showed the top three websites receives around 5.81 billion visits a month. That's how scary this disease is. 5.81 billion visits a month to the three top, top three websites of porn, uh, uh, pornography websites. This disease is killing our younger brothers and sisters and destroying the family unit. And destroying the family unit. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. O you who believe, protect yourselves or save yourselves and your family from the fire. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'ul an ra'yatih. All of you are shepherds and all of you are responsible over their flock. Akhraju al-Bukhari bin hadithi, Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. But how can one be responsible over his flock if he himself cannot help himself, let alone his children? If he cannot even help himself, how can he help his children? If you can't help yourself, how can you help anyone else? Save yourselves from the fire. Are you not fearful of what your eyes are seeing? Are you not fearful of what your eyes are seeing? <laughs> Ya'lamu 
خائنة الأعين وما تخفي الصدور والله يقضي بالحق Allah even knows the sly glances of the eyes and whatever the hearts conceal and Mujahid uh, explained this ayah and he said it is the eyes looking at what Allah has prohibited so what did the scholars say about the ruling of pornography a Sheikh Zayd al-Madkhali was asked this question and he responded there is no difference among the Muslims that it is haram and the person has committed a grave sin and this is an expert or excerpt from his longer speech there's no difference amongst the Muslims that it is haram and the person has committed a grave sin and Allah wa ta'ala says قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا يَصْنَعُونَ وَقُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُبْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُمْ O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and guard their chastity that is pure for them surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of what they do and tell the believing women to lower their gaze and guard their chastity there is a reason why Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has ordered us to protect ourselves and our eyes from these things because he knows what's best for us and to be honest the hikmah behind this is not even hidden Whoever is engaged in this affair is suffering. Whoever is engaged in this affair is suffering. Whether he is single or married. Whether he is single or married. From a spiritual aspect, engaging and watching porn or pornography weakens one's iman. Removes a person's khushur up to the point whereby even the listening to the Quran doesn't even positively hit the heart. It corrupts a person's soul and then, and then he could end up being a prisoner to his desires and is controlled by it. It corrupts this person's soul. And he could end up being a prisoner to his own desires and controlled by it. وأضله الله على علم وختم على سمعه وقلبه وجعل على بصره غشاوة فمن يهديه من بعد الآن أفلا تذكرون Have you not seen the one who takes his desires as his Lord? Ultimately, this can deprive you from the blessings of ilm. From knowledge Ibadah This can deprive you From the blessings of Knowledge Ilm And Ibadah And if you are watching porn Or pornography You are Getting A dopamine rush Dopamine rush A buzz And because it's a temporary buzz You feel like you need it again and again but it's like crack or heroin. You feel like you need this drug again and again. Just like those drugs, you may not realize, but in the long run, it's physically, in the long, in the long run, it's destroying you mentally and physically. It's destroying you mentally and physically. And when Qayyib rahimahullah mentions in Uddat Sabirin, he says, many people can be patient with the difficulties of standing in the night prayer many people can be patient with the difficulties of standing in the night prayer in the heat or cold and also with the hardship of fasting but they cannot be patient with the unlawful glance they cannot be patient with unlawful glance yani it's hard to take your eye off it and this was in his time rahimahullah what about now where it's on our phones what about now when it's on our phones you can be patient with fasting. You can be patient with uh, standing in the night prayer, in the cold or heat, as the Sheikh mentions, rahimahullah. 
but you can't be patient with regards to um, your eyes looking at something that which is haram. It's difficult to talk about this topic. It's difficult to talk about this topic, but it must be addressed for the betterment of our community. Because, yani, inna Allah la yastahi min al-haq. Yani, Allah doesn't shy away from the truth. Does it affect brothers and sisters going into marriage? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yani, let's start with the women first. Yani, the female. How has it come to women reaching this point? How has it come to yani, women reaching this point where it's affected them? And that's because of two reasons. One, number one, is that we live in a hypersexual society due to social media and lack of shyness. And the second reason is, is due to their patterns now resembling the men, which ultimately is due to the shift in culture and feminism. They, ad- they adopt masculine traits. So number two is, the second reason is due to their patterns now resembling the men, which ultimately is due to the shift in culture and feminism. They started to adopt masculine traits. So what negative effects does it have for a woman, yani for a female? Because these topics require more time than what I have. I'm just like touching upon the subject and its severity. The woman, the female, it affects her mentally whereby she has a false notion of intimacy. So when she has a husband, she, expect, she expects a certain feeling that she's used to or the constructs in her mind. Now for the woman, most of the times, she doesn't recognize the problem as opposed to the man who sees the problem apparent in front of his eyes. Because women, they, women, they have mental constructs that they live in, fantasies, yani. And female fantasies are linked to how the brain works. And it influences her marital life. Which is why brothers should place importance to being emotionally connected to the wife. Why? Because the most important uh, like sexual organ for the woman is her brain. So you need to be, as a man, emotionally connected to this, to your wife. Okay? So what about if she's addicted to watching pornography? And then worse, that she acts upon it whilst watching. And in doing so, this can impact her ability to complete intimacy with her husband. Babe, so this is one for women to think about anyone who's been affected by this as a woman, as a female. This has an impact on your mind and your, uh, it has an impact of, of your ability to complete intimacy with your husband. And that's from a mental aspect. From the physical aspect, she's also accustomed to seeing different parts of another man. For example, the muscular frame. Then she sees her new husband who's maybe a mesquite guy, a nice guy, and he can't meet her high expectations. Even though he meets the basic expectation, she has now harmed herself massively as she has now become desensitized and harmed her emotional connection with her husband. Right? So this can affect a marriage that's generally doing well and she is heedless of the fact that she has the problem. So she looks at her husband as if he has the problem. So what happens next? She looks elsewhere, Allah al-Musta'an, or it leads to a divorce. Be aware, my sister, if this is you, then find a way to detox before you reach a point that may harm your marriage. Find a way to detox before you reach a point that may harm your marriage. As for the brothers, then it has a spiritual, mental effect as well as a physical effect. As for the spiritual, then you can be deprived from so much khair. Sufyan al-Thawiri rahimahullah, he said he was deprived for five or six months of Qiyam al-Layl due to a sin he committed. Then what about this constant sin of looking at the haram? Will you not be deprived of so much khair that you want to do? Will you? You will be. Sah? Naam. So of course you'll be deprived. And you will lose barakah in your time. As for the mental and physical aspect, then there are many. As for the mental and physical aspect, then there are many. It can lower your self-esteem and confidence. Why do I say this? 
Because the bar that you have placed upon yourself has put pressure on yourself. Therefore, if you do not reach that bar that you have seen from someone else on the screen, then automatically your confidence and self-esteem will decrease. So not only will you disappoint yourself, you will disappoint your partner. Not only will you disappoint yourself, you will disappoint your partner. Also, you will have a lack of shyness. You will also you have a lack of shyness and your moral compass will change. Whereby you think certain things are okay when they're not. Whereby you think that certain things are okay when they're not. And this can split into many issues. Number one, you have a problem in engaging talks about things. You have, yani, you have no problem in engaging in talks about things that are abnormal. Yani, all of a sudden, it's accepted to you. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَعَنْ عَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْتَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ قَالْ الْإِيمَانُ بِدْعُمُ وَسَبْعُونَ أَوْ بِدْعُ وَسِتْعُونَ شُعْبَ فَأَفْضَلُهَا قَوْلُ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَأَدْنَاهَا إِمَاطُتُ الْأَذَى عَنِ الطَّرِيقِ وَالْحَيَاء شُعْبَ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ متفق عليه The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Iman is 70 or 60 odd branches The highest or the best of them is the statement of La ilaha illallah and the lowest is removing something harmful off the street and shyness is from Iman Hadith is in Bukhari Muslim so that's number one, shyness. The fact that you're, this is normal now, it's become normal to talk about these things. Number two, your shyness has gone, that even your moral compass has changed, which means you are not shy about acting out degrading acts to your wife that you have seen on screen. You are not shy about acting out degrading acts that you, that you have seen on screen. You are not shy of acting out these acts with your wife. Now, if you're single, you may think, that's got nothing to do with me. Yani, I'm single. What's that got to do with me? But what makes you think, if you carry on like this with what you're watching, that you wouldn't do the same act when you do get married? What makes you think that you won't do this? Because that's what you know of, right? Subsequently, what are you doing to your wife? What are you doing to your wife? You are introducing her to things that are abnormal and taking away her being loved the right way. You're taking away her being loved the right way. So even if you get divorced, even if you get divorced, she's unaware of what proper love is. Therefore, in her next marriage, she's accustomed to the nonsense that you dragged her into. You, she's accustomed to the nonsense that you dragged her into. And you see, how many relationships can be destroyed from this? How many relationships can be destroyed from this? Some brothers Allah Allah him are in marriages, not interested in pleasing their wives, which is from her right, but they'd rather be pleased how they've seen yani, these useless actors that they've seen on screen doing it, Lashik, we all have sins, but it's one thing to oppress yourself, but it's another to drag your partner and, oppressing, and oppress her. Taib. Additionally, watching pornography gives you a dopamine hit, a dopamine hit, which gives you a quick hits on, uh, on demand pleasure. Yeah, any quick hits on demand pleasure, on pleasure. So now your brain can't even focus or stay locked in when it comes to many things in, the, in, in life. When it comes to many things in life. So, يعني, because they don't, they don't give you instant gratification. So your concentration levels, they start to drop. You can't even focus on your day-to-day -day tasks. You can't even focus on that. Because you're so used to the dopamine hits from, from pornography, the quick uh, uh, instant gratification, the quick pleasure, and now you can't even focus on other things. That's one point. The next point is anxiety and social awkwardness. The more pornography you watch, or even pixels of women on social media platforms, because we're not only talking about pornography here, we're talking about pixels of women, yeah, any pictures of women on social media platforms, Instagram, whatever it is, TikTok, whatever. They, they now become your friends. They now become your friends. 
even if they don't respond back to you they're your friends therefore when you do get married the notion of you being close to your wife gives you anxiety and anxiousness because you're so used to dealing with that which is unreal you're so used to dealing with that which is unreal these points must write them down inshallah if it's if you even if you believe you're not you're not affected by this you may know someone who is the next point is wrong expectations wrong expectations what do we mean by this when watching pornography you have an expectation of what intimacy is about and you when you project that notion onto your spouse you think this is normal you think this is normal but you are suffering from a trauma from that which you have seen and now you're projecting this trauma in, into your spouse so what tends to happen is you want to do things that are degrading to your wife and the possible mother to your kids if you don't know this that's a problem and if you do know it then it's a bigger problem how do you coerce your wife into things that are disgusting and degrading and once you pass that you want to go beyond that you want to be you want to go you want to go beyond the threshold until yani until which point will you reach every time there's something new you want to go beyond that until which point will you reach because of the stuff that you're watching also there's another expectation you have you look at your wife and you find physical faults because you've been accustomed to seeing a specific type of woman or actor shall i say yani online so you can't see anything except that particular actor therefore therefore your private part is not registering what your mind wants your private part is not registering what your mind wants to do because your mind is elsewhere it's connected to something else your mind is connected to what you've seen and your private part is not registering to your mind so the wife is in front of you you don't see anything there these are important points these are important points this is very, these are very important points if we don't speak about them we don't deal with these issues then we put them we brush them under the carpet i know some of the things are embarrassing but we still have to speak about it now the last one which is a common issue is ed which is ed which stands for erectile dysfunction which is from porn induced ed which means you have been accustomed to digital stimuli therefore when you are in a real life situation with a woman you cannot perform when you're in a real life situation with a woman your wife you cannot perform two things will happen two things will happen number one number one you're not solid enough to deal with the situation and it's dysfunctional you're not solid enough to deal with the situation and it's dysfunctional i hope you understand that number two you have delayed you have now de- either if, if it's not the first one then the second one you have delayed ejaculation which means you don't feel any pleasure whatsoever now you don't feel any pleasure whatsoever not only has it affected your confidence what have you dra- dragged your wife into you have affected your own confidence now what have you dragged your wife into you've harmed her confidence now whereby she thinks it's her fault but really you're the problem the saddest thing from this is that shaitan shaitan and this is a very very important point the saddest thing from this is that shaitan has beautified to you the haram and allah tabaraka wa ta'ala has blessed you with the halal but you are unappreciative of it i repeat shaitan has beautified to you the haram and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with the halal but you are unappreciative of the halal and when a person is not grateful or when a person is unappreciative of the blessings of allah then he will lose those blessings and he may be trialed with the falsehood he will lose those blessings and he may be trialed with falsehood now you tell me my brothers after all this is it worth to have these small dopamine hits is it worth to have these small dopamine hits is five or ten minutes of pleasure worth the long-term effects that you can have no huh is it worth it is it worth it no it's not worth it of course not how embarrassing it can be subhanallah 
how embarrassing it can be. Secondly, is it fair to go into a marriage when you have these issues that you are aware of? Is it fair? No, it's not fair. When all when 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 we yani when hearing all this, it reminds me of the ayah in Surah Al Imran. The day every soul will find what it has done of good presented before it, and you don't see it. And what it has done of evil, it will wish that, and you will wish that you are far away from this, a great distance. You don't want to come near that evil. You wouldn't want to, you would want to stay far away from this because how filthy this act is, or watching this, and what it does to you, and what it can do to you long term. You want to stay completely far away from this. Allah Taala mentions with regards to sins in Surah Al Imran. Therefore, if you have this issue, if you have this issue, what should you do? You should detox from today. You should detox from today and fix your issue. How do you go about doing that? How do you go about doing that? Well, firstly, yani you would want to write this down or put these points down. And there's nothing to be shy about. It doesn't mean that it's you that ha- you have the issue. It could be someone else. Firstly, you need to make serious du'a to Allah Tabarak wa Taala sincerely, and cry to Him Subhanahu wa Taala to remove this disease from your heart. You need to cry to Allah Tabarak wa Taala and make serious du'a so that Allah Jalla wa Ala can remove this disease in your heart. Secondly. You need to busy yourself with good deeds by increasing your ibadah. For example, if you're serious about detoxing, then don't come with excuses that oh, I can't pray qiyam al-layl because these kind of actions, uh, you know, uh, yani I can't pray qiyam al-layl. Yani it's, it's hard. If you're serious about this, that you want detox. Because these kind of actions will prevent you from falling into the haram. As Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says, Inna salata tanha anil fahsha wal munkar. Wala dhikrullahi akbar. Wallahu ya'lamu ma tisna'oon. Indeed, prayer prohibits immorality and wrongdoing. And the remembrance of Allah is greater. And Allah knows that which you do. So it prevents one eventually from falling into this sin. It prevents one from eventually falling into this sin. However, that depends on your sincerity and the effort you put in. طيب, he should also do ruqya on himself and daily adhkar morning and evening. Any ruqya on himself, even if it's before you sleep, that also is a prevention. So you don't, you feel bad, you feel guilty. طيب. Thirdly, what you need to do is get rid of the triggers that make you want to do this sin. You have to get rid of the triggers that make you want to do the sin. Because the reality is many brothers are watching, but also acting upon it by masturbating. Okay? In order to prevent this, there are additional things you can incorporate. So for example, if you have social media accounts whereby you're seeing nudity, and it doesn't have to be pornography itself, even social media as we know, it could be just the pixels on social media just the pixels on social media. If that is your issue, and it's not pornography, that you're seeing, uh, nudity, naked women on the social media, and that's triggering you, then deactivate those accounts. Deactivate your account. If you're serious about getting better, if you're serious about getting better, then you need to deactivate that account. If you're not, fine, you're not. But then don't cry 
when it affects your mental and physical health afterwards. Don't cry later when it affects your mental and physical health afterwards. Now you might be sitting here and thinking, Ah, Adi, I've got time, don't worry. Inshallah, I'll fix up when I get married. La. We've just mentioned a bunch of things. It's your mental health, your mental, the correlation of your mental and your physical being. That connection that it has, it may affect you big time and then you'll be embarrassed in front of your spouse. Okay, fourthly, and we'll talk about practical measures that you can take after dua and ibadah and ruqya and adhkar. Fourthly, incorporate cold showers. So whenever you get the urge, have a cold shower. Because then straight after that, your blood isn't pumping like normal. And you'll think about feeling cold. So your urge disappears. Because you're cold. So your urge disappears. Number five, fifthly, exercise. Yahamakallah. Number five, exercise. Why? Why do I say exercise? Because you have energy that you have to release. So you need to deposit that energy. Yahamakallah. You need to deposit that energy elsewhere. So use it by doing, مثلاً, 50 or 100 push-ups. So use it when you, يعني, so use it by doing 50 or 100 push-ups, يعني, straight away. So when you burn all that energy, you are shattered, you are tired. You don't have any energy for any sinful act. You don't have any energy for any sinful act. You just put, you just done 100 push-ups right now. Babe. So that is also prevention from you falling into that sinful act. The sixth point, and this might sound silly to be honest. It might sound silly, but it can be a factor. Don't lay around idle chilling in your shorts. Don't lay around idle just chilling in your shorts. Yani only shorts on. Yani have some overlayers. Keep your room tidy and clean regularly. These are for the single brothers. Keep your room tidy and clean regularly. When the room is dirty and things are not on point and they're all over the place and you're just idle and you feel lazy because your room is lazy, so you, it has an effect on you. So now you're lazy, thoughts could come to your mind. Thoughts could come to your mind. Babe, keep your room clean, be on point, put everything in its place, have like a, a schedule on what you're going to do. You don't have time for nonsense then. But if it's all messed up, you can't even clean your room, you're idle, you're on your shorts, you're just hanging around like idle like this, you're lazy, what else are you going to do? You're going to, shaitan's going to mess with you on your own. Khalas. You'll be falling into this nonsense. Daib, these are practical measures that you've got to put in place. Even if you think it's minor, you've got to put these things in place. Because the urge itself is not the issue. I'm not telling you not to have urge. The urge itself is a, it's not an issue. Navigating it the wrong way is the issue. So what happens is, if you, if you lower your gaze, if you lower your gaze, and you cut out the triggers, and you are focused in your deen and life, and in your life, you become physically, mentally, and spiritually strong. And you start to achieve good results in all these aspects. Spiritually, mentally, and, and uh, physically strong. And then by default, when you are married, all that energy is natural. And it comes out naturally. Fulfilling your right and ful- fulfilling your wife's right to intimacy. Taib. All that energy that you have controlled and is navigated through the right measures, the right way, now you can bring those urges out in the correct halal manner. You'll be solid on, 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 and you'll be on point. But if you're using that energy on nonsense, method and you're, you're not lowering your gaze, you're always looking at nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. Even if it's not pornography, you're looking at nonsense online, your energy is wasted on that. So then when it comes to, and we mentioned already the harms of it, when it comes to your wife now, you don't have any more, you have no energy. And say, for example, you're a newly married brother. Yeah, you're finished. What energy do you have? You have nothing. Babe, you have oppressed yourself and you have oppressed your wife because that's from her rights too. So I'd say, my brothers, it's time to put a stop to all this. Put a stop to all this nonsense and fight against our desires. I would like to ask any brother here, do you accept for yourself defeat? Do you accept for yourself defeat? Do you, accept, do you accept for yourself defeat? Okay, do you do you accept for yourself defeat? La. Taib? Do you guys accept for yourself defeat? La, you don't. And that's in anything, right? Taib. So if you have this problem, don't accept for yourself defeat in this problem too. Because this problem is not your own problem. This problem will be and it will have an effect on. You want to say something? 
This problem is not only your issue, it will affect your spouse. So you don't want this. Not only is it embarrassing, it's mentally draining, physically draining, and spiritually it will finish you. It will finish you spiritually. So here, no man here can accept for a defeat, as we've mentioned right now. All of you have said. So what do you say? Have the willpower and fight against your desires. If you want a good life and attain the ultimate abode, which is Jannah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Hujjabat al-Nar bil-Shahawat wa Hujjabat wa Hujjabat so Hujjabat al-Nar bil-Shahawat wa Hujjabat al-Jannah bil-Makarih. The fire is surrounded by desires, and Jannah is surrounded by those things that are disliked. أخرجه البخاري ومسلم من حديثي أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه. Meaning, you have to stay away from your desires. You have to stay away from your desires because that's what will lead you to the fire. Now, before I finish off, I just want to mention a side point. Uh, and that is, what is the role of the wife who finds out her husband has a, a pornography issue? طيب. Well, firstly, يعني, it's a good thing that you've found that out. It is a good thing that you found it out. But now, the first thing you're going to do is, you will question yourself. If it, First thing you're going to do is, you'll question yourself. And it, 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 you'll ask yourself, or maybe it's my fault. يعني, or you may even feel some guilt as a woman. Uh, if you can get past that point as a wife, if you are going to stay in that marriage, يعني, يعني, if we were to agree that you're going to stay in that marriage, if you can get past the guilt and questioning yourself, that it's not your fault, then that's an excellent start in itself. Because you've gone past the shock element of this. You've gone past the shock element as a wife. The next thing is to understand that many men have already been expo- exposed, to, exposed to pornography. Whether it's at school or anywhere else at a particular time or work or wherever, and in some part of their life, most men have been exposed to this. So if you can be mature enough to understand this or understand that, then encourage your husband to be open about it with you in terms of when it started and how and how and etc. Because many men stumble upon it rather than actively search for it. Many men, they actually stumble upon this rather than actively search for this kind of stuff. And many men, many women won't stay, but for argument's sake, we said if she stays, then she needs to be there for him by showing him love and compassion but uh, because it's an embarrassing issue in itself as there are many factors that has led him to yani, led, him, led him to that and from them is yani, loneliness and anxiety uh, maybe stress uh, no productivity and yani, many things that are in that and the last thing is that she needs to when she's come to this point she needs to support him in getting some sort of detox program. Getting him some sort of detox program. And she can be a part of that by overlooking, overseeing her, his detox program. If he's truthful, whereby he wants to change. But her staying and allowing this behavior is not something that, we, that I'd condone or we should condone. It will only be harm يعني, to her and to him and for their future. And inshallah, I'd like to stop there. Anything khayr that I've said is from Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. And anything sharr that I've said is from Shaytan and myself. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu wa la ilaha la ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Jazakumullahu khairan.